The World Health Organization is sounding the alarm. Its latest report says some of the most powerful weapons we have in the fight against infectious disease are useless because of a growing global resistance to antibiotics. And if we don't act now, it means even minor infections could become major problems. Cass Rusi reports. You survive a knee replacement, but bacteria sets in. Antibiotics, those life-saving drugs, help fight the infection, the stuff of what modern medicine is built on. But in an ominous report, the World Health Organization warns that resistance to antibiotics has reached alarming levels, rendering many of the life-saving treatments useless against infections. When we are most vulnerable and in need of these medicines, there is a chance that they're simply not going to be available and we are not going to be able to have uh, access to effective medical care in a number of instances. The report identifies at least seven so-called superbugs, powerful bacteria resistant to antibiotics that the WHO now says are a global threat, including stronger strains of bacteria like E. coli and salmonella. And in Canada, the WHO says the sexually transmitted disease gonorrhea is showing resistance to treatment. It's all and true. For more on um, this, we're the antibiotic, uh, the bacteria are rapidly becoming resistant to antibiotics and we're running out of choices. I mean, I fully expect to see a lot of 100% resistant bacteria that I'm trying to treat during my career. Yeah, so this is a nice... In his nice lab at Toronto's nice Sunnybrook Hospital, Dr. Andrew Seymour studies one of the latest threats, a hospital-acquired infection called MRSA. The most color are the bacteria. While some countries have been aggressive in surveillance for antibiotic resistance, he says Canada lacks a national plan. We can't rely on being in a protected environment here in Canada. We know that these organisms are circulating in other parts of the world and sooner or later, if they're not already here, they will be here. In its first global report on antibiotic resistance, the WHO uses unusually strong language in describing this clear and present danger, saying far from an apocalyptic fantasy, this is a very real possibility right now. Cass Rusi, CBC News, Toronto. And for more on this, we're joined by CBC News medical contributor, Dr. Samir Sinha. So, uh, doctor, are you seeing a lot more patients with this kind of uh, resistance? I think clinicians all over the world are actually seeing a growing amount of antibiotic resistance in our patients. So things like pneumonias or antibiotics, when we actually look at what is available to treat our patients with, we're seeing that we're having fewer and fewer choices with this becoming a growing issue. But a lot of patients think it's a it's an easy solution, right? What, what should patients be told? Well, I think the first thing we have to remind people is that not every infection actually requires antibiotics. So the first, the first aspect is if it's a bacterial infection, it could require that, but sometimes just symptom management and our own immune systems are good enough. So I think it's reminding us that we can do a lot of things to prevent infections, such as washing our hands, getting those flu vaccinations, pneumonia vaccinations. But then when it's time to think about, you know, do I need an antibiotic, is have that conversation with your physician and say, is there anything else I could do or is, is an antibiotic what I need? And what about doctors? What's uh, your advice for them? You know, doctors are increasingly recognizing this is an important issue, and so many of us are starting to educate ourselves. You know, many colleagues are starting to do programming where we understand when is it best to prescribe, what's the right thing to prescribe, for what duration, but also reminding our patients that if we give you an antibiotic, take the full prescription. Mm. Yeah, we hear that all the time. But is part of it to learn just how to say no to patients who are asking for this? Well, I think it's two parts. I think one is, you know, to have the courage and, and to spend the time and have the conversation to say, you know, this is why I don't think an antibiotic is the best thing for you. But I think it's also to get patients to start asking their clinicians, doc, is there something else that I can do other than just taking an antibiotic? Because it's serious, right? People can die. Absolutely. We're seeing growing prevalence of things like MRSA. So that's a common um, resistant organism in our hospitals and now in our communities. So, And we have multidrug resistant tuberculosis. These are real issues that are happening. You know, the sky isn't falling, but we can do a lot better to actually use these resources wisely so that we can preserve our, our mutual health. Thanks so much, Dr. Thank you. Dr. Sinha.